Greetings Rainbow Vac fans. Well, we're going to take a closer look at HEPA filtration for this E2 that came to me via a donation from Thomas Rechtenwald. And you saw it uh, in one of our prior mini-meets. The filter that came with it, and this machine was kind of a wreck, but the filter that came with it, I'm going to see if I can get something real close up here. There we go. Look at that. That's what that, that's what that looks like. That, it, oh, that's just, it's amazing. There just are no words for that, but it gets worse. So that's the interior part of the filter. Here's what the exhaust is like. Look at that. That's damage. I mean, in addition to, you know, whatever discoloration is there, you're talking about real physical damage. So I'm not going to test this terrible original filter. I just kept it so I could show you, well, obviously when you abuse anything, you're going to get some terrible results. So not bothering with that. So let's take a look at a filter that was in an E2 Gold. Now the E2 Gold needs some new bearings or some regreased bearings. But this filter is a number of years old. So that's what the inside or water bowl facing part of the filter looks like. You know, it's not bad. Now, I don't know exactly how old this filter is. Maybe it's five years old. Maybe it's 10 years old. But this looks almost brand new. A lot better than the original one that came in that, uh, that E2 when I first got it. So this was in an E2 Gold, and you know, if it's a dozen years old, maybe, I'm not sure. You can see the little rubber surround right here. Well, actually, it's not really rubber. This is more like a foam. The newer ones are more rubbery. This, this feels more foamy to me anyway. It's a slightly different material than, than the newest ones. But we're going to go and test these things. And we're going to test against a brand new unopened filter I just got from Rainback. This was the least expensive place I could buy a genuine Rainbow HEPA exhaust filter and I got it for about $31 shipped. It's the best price I could find. So we're going to take a look at these and we're going to test particle emissions and airflow. And what we're going to start out with initially is a baseline set of tests. I don't want to do baseline particulate count because it literally is like a hundred some odd CFM of water vapor going right into this detection uh, uh, tube right here. I don't, I don't want to do that because that's really going to mess this meter up. I don't want to try to measure heavy water vapor going into this thing. So we're going to skip an initial particle count, but we are going to do uh, airflow and particle counts for uh, the two filters that are sitting over here and the one that I threw over there I'm not gonna have anything to do with it I'm just gonna throw it away I only wanted to keep it so I could show you what not to do with the rainbow okay I just want to show you that the back is completely open so this is just a raw airflow test of course we've got cold water in the bowl and let's go ahead and get started. All right, hopefully we've got a good focus. Let's see what we get for total raw airflow. And now what is my new E2? HEPA filter to impede the airflow at all. And we're at 102.8 CFM. And that's just a raw airflow number. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead 
and put in the old but fairly clean HEPA filter from the gold and then we're going to remeasure. Okay, so now we have the used, well used filter from the E2 Gold. Installed. There we go. So let's see what we have. First things first, we'll do airflow losses. <laughs> So remember, we were at 102.8, maybe we could round that to 103. Now we go down to 95. Wow, uh, that's uh, she's that that's almost an 8 CFM loss. So, but that's an old filter. So let me turn this thing around, and now let's do do a uh, particle test. Okay, old filter particle test. We got this down to about 180. Come on, there we go, 180. Now look, I'm just gonna actually go and measure it the same way right here, just for consistency's purposes. I'm not actually saying that this is the best angle to measure this in. I'm looking just for relative differences here, not absolute differences. But 180 out of a filter that might be five or 10 years old, man, that's not bad. But we were looking at about an eight CFM loss. All right, so now, time to put the brand new filter in. Now we have the new filter in. So let's see what we have for airflow. and we're at 92 wow so that new filter is really restricting airflow that's something so and you can see here's the really terrible one here and here's the one that isn't quite so bad here but we're now down to 92 all right let's check particle count all right now for a particle count of the new filter 
and I've just kind of uh, removed this little foam after filter and, and kind of stuck that in there. Maybe that's good, maybe it's bad. We'll find out. <laughs> So it's a six. So if I go, and that that's fantastic, by the way. So, I mean, who cares if it's a six or a two or whatever it is. I'm going to stick this weird foam stuff back in here. I, I was actually surprised when we got it. I thought it was like charcoal something or other. It, it really doesn't appear to be that. It appears to just be regular foam. So, all right, I'm going to put that back in there. All right, now I'm going to go and, and do the test again. So, right or wrong, I want to be consistent. So what can we see from this? Goes from almost a zero, you know, six, to a couple hundred. So this foam filter, and it's probably components of the filter itself, are increasing the particle count. So it's up to you. You want to take that filter, uh, you want to take this little post filter out, because, I mean, you, you can just yank it out. It's pushed way up in there. Obviously, you see the little T sides on either side. But that's up to you. So if you've gotten one of these new fangled filters and it's got this little foam after filter, uh, well, whatever, um, it appears to uh, increase the particle count. So I, it doesn't seem like it's charcoal. It seems like it's a regular foam filter as far as I can tell but it definitely increases the particle count. All right, let's do airflow tests on the new filter, but I've taken that little weird T-shaped foam external filter, I suppose. Let's see, you know, feet per minute. And I've um, raised it up. So hopefully it won't be quite as restrictive. Let's see if there's any difference though. <laughs> Okay, so 37, 20, 
and we're at 97. All right, so what this means is to me, yeah, I'll show you what I did. I just lifted this foam this foam filter up. Normally it's it's down here and it just, just kind of pops out like this. I can't actually, I'd, I'd have to go and tear it to completely remove it because it does not want to come down or out easily. I can't do that beyond that. So having this up here, yeah, there's a definite difference. We were at about 92 CFM, the foam filter tucked in, and with this thing popped out or partially out, 97. So that's definitely a little bit better than the clean old filter. And so better particle filtration testing from here, better airflow testing from here, worse particle filtration with this foam filter on, and worse CFM with the foam filter on. So, geez. My recommendation is, is frankly, remove this. But, you know, again, that's up to you. Well, as a final parting comment, I have removed. I was able to, to figure out how to get this out. I didn't want to tear it, just in case I wanted to put it back in. I didn't want to destroy it. But I've taken this little post HEPA filter, filter, and it just, it's really, it just seems to be foam. It doesn't seem to be anything special at all. So it lowers airflow and increases particle count. So for me, those are two giant thumbs down. So for me, I'm going to leave that little post foam filter out. But the choice is yours.